If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining us on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future releases that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today you guys we are checking out the Airmobile flying car. I mean yeah. So believe it or not this was actually a real prototype uh, built in Austria back in 2014. Unfortunately shortly after the prototype was built it was never really developed any further than that. Which obviously I would imagine has to do with the fact that the world really isn't ready for a flying car as of yet. But as you guys can see, it is a very awesome looking model of the thing. And we're going to explore this thing from top to bottom, sort of checking out everything. This is a brand new release, you guys. It just released this morning on flightsim.to. You can find it there. I'll have a link in the description for $19.99. It's got a bunch of really cool features to it. And we're just going to sort of fly it around town here and uh, also try to land it and see what you know, driving it is like because that's just crazy in itself. So as far as the texturing goes, I really enjoy the exterior modeling. I think the exterior modeling was done pretty well. There's a couple spots that you could obviously use a little bit further detail or, or some shadowing. Like, for example, the license plate there sort of just looks like a sticker that was stuck on there. Uh, so there is some modeling that needs to be uh, adjusted, I guess. And this is just me being nitpicky, right? Um, but uh, there's a couple spots here where the coloring gets a little flat, and I'm sure you guys can pinpoint those out. If not, I'm not going to necessarily draw attention to them. I'm just speaking my overall thoughts on it. Let's go ahead and jump into the cockpit and see what's going on here. Again, a little bit of the shading and some further reflection, I think, needs to be done on all of this white paneling because some of it sort of just gets lost in the outside texture and it becomes really chalky and really flat. Um, and I think that takes away from some of the depth that could be existent in this aircraft. Um, if everything were, were, were sort of refined. But again, all this is me being very, very nitpicky here, guys. Um, I'm more into this for the experience of what it must be like to use something like this in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm pretty excited to try this out. We have our circuit breaker panel over here, radio panels, your autopilot, your transponder, rocking the G3000 suites on both of the screens here. Um, obviously, all of your electrical panels and uh, your uh, external gauges here, or internal gauges here. You also have the EFB. Now, the EFB is pretty neat. Uh, quite a few things that we can do here. Swipe up to unlock. You guys can see this little charging cable there. You can actually remove it. Not sure why you would, but you know you have that option. You also have these different clocks where you can actually set the uh, time zone of where you want to be. I don't know if I can type in here. Nope, probably shouldn't be doing that. Let's come back over here and come back over here. Oh, it did type. So it's just because I have other keybinds. So we'll just get it over with. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's not actually taking it like that. So let me try just typing in Tucson. This should be interesting. Oh, brought something up. Huh, it's not bringing up my city. That's not right. Uh, that's not fair. Anyway, may not have the full database yet. I'm not quite sure how that all works. Either that or I've got the wrong country code selected here. Oh, I could probably check. Let's try over here. Here, I'm just going to click one back there. I'm going to come back over here. Fine, I don't care. Uh, let's see here. New York. Gosh darn it. Huh. So I think the time zone clock definitely needs a little bit of work. Um... Because, yeah, this is sort of odd behavior. Again, just released today, so you guys are seeing things as I'm seeing them. Um, now, the one thing I really do like is the sort of news update panel here. It sort of gives us all of the information that we need to know, like right out of the bat. Teleporting to the fuel truck, which I'll show you guys here in a minute, uh, is currently not working. will be fixed very soon. Watch out for new updates. And then it gives you more information down here about the latest information. So that's pretty awesome. Um, I do like that there's an update post there because that way every time you jump in the aircraft or if you want to know if something's new with the aircraft, you just have to load the aircraft. So that's pretty hot. Let's go over here to the Aero Mobile menu. Oh, get out of there enough. Come down here and let's see what we got here. So obviously you have your dashboard which gives you all the current aircraft performance information as well as the surface information as it loads up and a top down view of where you are on the geographical map. You have some ground equipment options here. It does take the EFB a little bit to load. I do hope that is something that speeds up a little bit faster because it's kind of weird to me uh, the way it does this. But here you can set your chocks. We can open up the canopy. 
which I think is really cool the way it's forward opening. And then we're going to check out the fuel here in just a minute. And you can also open the engine cover, which takes you to the back. And if you want to, you could actually zoom your camera in there and poke around in the engine there. So coming back over here, let's go ahead and click on that fuel so you guys can see what's going on. So we click on that. It's going to bring the fuel truck right there. Now let's sort of get into a bit further about how this all works out. So if we come over to wait now, from here, we're going to select each tank that we want to fill. So for example, the right tank is at 50%. If we select it, you guys are going to see the camera do something a little goofy. Now this is where it's supposed to take us over to the fuel truck. Now I've set up a quick cam to bring us over there. All of your fueling is actually done right over here. So we actually, let's see here, uh, we got to open up the fuel valve. I actually haven't done this part before. We got to turn the main power switch on. And there's actually a, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Oop. Oh, that's cool. That's for night. And you also have a defueling, by the way, that you can do as well. And we want to turn the pump on. Injector on. I believe. Come over here and hit start. And it begins fueling the aircraft. Now, this is just fueling the one tank that we had before. So let's just do finish here, 1.69. Now, I believe we can click this and go to the cockpit again. And from here, we'll select the left tank. You can see now we're at 70, 70%. So we'll select the left tank now. Again, I have to use my quick cam. This is the teleport that isn't working. And let's see here, 1.69, what would that be? Oh, gosh. 3.28? 3.38. Something like that. Oh no, it's never mind. It's doing like the same way it did. Boop. Close enough. Look at that. That was pretty damn good. All right. And then, so what we'll simply do here is turn everything off. Let's close the valve. Make sure we don't dump fuel all over the ground. Turn our power off. And I'm just going to use my quick cam, take us back to the cockpit. We should have about 70% in the two tanks. So awesome sauce, right? And then you have your navigation map, again, top-down topographical map, as well as an airport search. If you want, you can search by ICAO code and find your respective airport, which will give you coordinates, geographical location, your runway options, and here, we'll actually just type in KTUS once again. And let's go back. There we go. Hit search. It is very interesting that none of my airport information is working today. So again, this may be a bug. You can also change your license plate. You can either show it or hide it. Go ahead and leave it up. We've got to represent or overkill. Throw things up there. And let's see here. You can also select the region or generic of where you want it to be. Now, I'm wondering if the airport information is only working overseas right now and may not be set up for... Uh, ICAO, or in our case, you know, the United States mainland. I'm not quite sure. Um, so I am kind of curious as to why the airport search did not work. I hope that is something that gets resolved. Um, but the developer will definitely be seeing this video, guys. So everything that you're seeing, they will see as well. So let's go ahead and get into the fun stuff here and fly the aircraft. So let's go to our ground once again. Let's make sure we close the trunk door there. Let's close the canopy here. Let's start walking through some of the processes here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select the left tank here. There we go. And I need to move my camera, actually. There we go. There's a master battery alternator. Let's go ahead and turn the avionics bust on now. Turn that fuel pump on. Now, I don't remember what lights I have option here. We have the strobe light already on, but we don't have any kind of beacon light, so I guess that would make sense for that on. Oh, position lights. We can turn those on as well. Don't need the cabin lights. Turn those off. And I think that is landing lights. Yes, it is. All right. So, landing slash taxi light. Let's go ahead and set our barometric pressure. Make sure that's ready and good to go. Taz system test. So everything's touchscreen now. Let's see. Can we remove the steering wheel if we wanted to? Because that's actually something that I really like to do when I fly is to get rid of the yoke. That way you guys can always see everything behind it. It doesn't look like it, but it also doesn't seem to be very intrusive. Uh, let's see here. And then 
Again, not seeing a whole lot of functionality here. Oh wait, there we go. It helps when I hit the right things here. So there's our menu. All right, so Synaptic Vision. I'm kind of wondering if it has to do with the camera view, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Yep, that's exactly what it was. See, and this is why I like to remove the steering wheels. So I, if the developer does see this, I really hope that they find a way to remove the steering wheel because that is, that would be nice. Okay. So, and again, you can set your heading and all that good jazz from here. Everything's controlled from up here. So if we want to highlight heading mode, you can simply adjust your heading accordingly. I believe it doesn't look like it has a sync function though, which I find kind of odd, but again, that's all right. Depressing and holding doesn't seem to work. So a few things that I'd like to see added to this, but I also don't know what the functionality of the real one was. So let's see here. Can we, oh, synthetic view by simply tapping enter. I always like the synthetic view. All right, so let's back up here. Now you have uh, your wing mode selection. So this is flight mode. If we wanted to go to drive mode, check this out. Oh, and I think I actually should have put the shifter in drive mode before I did that. But then we can also fold the wings. That's pretty freaking awesome if you ask me. I thought we got rid of the fuel tray because the... Oh, we did not. Get out of here. We don't need you. We don't need your kind here. Okay. But obviously, we want to fly right now. Oops. I think I went the wrong way. There we go. Back into flight mode. Get a status of our wings there. Flap controls to the right of the steering wheel there. Looks good. Okay, well, let's see what we got going on here. So, let's see here. We have on the shifter down here. We have drive, park, and flight. I'm going to leave it in park for a minute. We're going to turn our transponder on. It is set to on, good. All right, and let's go ahead and try to start her up. See what happens here. There's our magnetos. Let's go outside. Now you can hear the engine. don't have any rotation so I'm kind of wondering if that's because we are not in flight mode ah there it goes makes perfect sense now if we want to go to drive mode all right we're gonna we're gonna try a taxi here oh let me go to drive mode hold on let's go to drive mode I want to fold the wings and we'll use drive mode taxi to the runway. Oh, and I have the chocks on. You do just steer with your rudder pedals. Definitely a very, very different seeing a steering wheel there. It's kind of throwing me off. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, the flight stick doesn't do anything in drive mode, so definitely with the rudder pedals. But let's, uh, I mean, we are driving. And uh, sometimes when you're driving, you speed, right? See how fast it goes in car mode here. Oops, helps if I got on the taxiway. <laughs> I went right over the line, didn't even pay attention. It's like 35, 40 knots. So it looks like we'll get probably about what? What would that be? Probably around 60 miles an hour, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around there, give or take. Very 
interesting. Very interesting. I'm not... <laughs> it's definitely something totally new here. And like I said, this this thing was really built. This is a real aircraft. Or car thing. It's a prototype. I just have to look it up. It's a pretty, pretty unique story behind it. And I really also do like that, that the uh, documentation that comes with the aircraft is very thorough, walks you through everything you need to know to get everything up and running for you. Um, but also gives you a lot of information in regard to what happened with the original, with the original prototype. All right, so I think I'm gonna sort of just stop us here. Let me see if I can get the old track IR to behave today. I was fighting with it yesterday and it's the camera. I think my camera's dying. My camera keeps disconnecting from my computer and I think there's a reason why because it's like the only thing that keeps disconnecting. And then sometimes when I do get it to work, it, it like, it'll turn on, but the track IR itself won't actually activate. Yeah, see like right now it's being a little weird. Hang on. Ah, there we go. Okay, well, it's working. Okay. So, let's see here. Let's go into flight mode now. I wonder if you can do that. Can I, can I do that on the move? I'm going to try to do it on the move. It's probably not something that would normally be safe, but you can go to flight mode. Yeah, no. It doesn't look like it'll let me. <laughs> Looks like you have to be in park. Alright, so we're going to put it down to park here. because I wasn't in idle. Okay, so let's try this again. Because I think I'm making it mad now. Chalk's back on here for a second. Uh-oh. Did I ruin it? I think I broke it, Captain. I wonder if the engine can't be running. That would make sense. Oh, I am so dumb. <laughs> That's going the wrong way. <laughs> I forgot that I had pushed it that way to close them. Like, I... Yep. Yep. Yep, that happened. You, you guys saw it happen. I'm, I'm guilty. Uh, let's go... Back into flight mode now. There we go. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess I kind of earned that one. That was silly. Oops. Alright, so now let's turn the strobe light on. Uh, how did my lights get turned off? Oh, that's interesting. In drive mode, it shut all the uh, external lights off. I guess that makes sense when you think about it. Alright, so here we go. Buddy, brakes are really touchy. I do hope the propeller animation gets a little bit more love, too.
Oof. Slow down. Crazy. All right, we're going to try no flaps take off here. Flaps are retracted. Off we go. There's 20 knots, airspeed alive. There's 40 knots, 50 knots, 60 knots rotating. Oh, whoa. A little too hard there. There it is, you guys. The flying car. Did you guys imagine just seeing this coming over your hometown? The yellow tinting on the window is really weird, too. There's a lot of glare, but for all we know, that could be very realistic. But at the very least, I wish there was a way to disable that, like if you chose to. Let's see, what do we have here? What are these guys? Some trim indicators. Manifold pressure actually seems, or manifold pressure, RPM seem a bit low. But it flies very nice. I mean, it's touchy. I mean, how aerodynamic could something like this really be? Whoa, I am like way up there, aren't I? Alright, settle down. Settle down. There we go. Trim down, trim down. It's got a cruising speed of around 130 knots. Gosh dang. And it loves to climb. It's a very bouncy day here. The wind is, wind is up, the uh, heat is up. So obviously get the thermals and everything. And then as you can see, Tucson sits in a bowl anyway, so. We get all that wind coming off the mountains. Very, very interesting aircraft. I want to try. <laughs> We're going to try to drive on the freeway here. I mean, what else do you do with a flying car but uh, use it to uh, escape traffic and then land back down when no one knows you were there? One power off. Flaps will dump it, as you guys just saw. I can't imagine there's much of a flare to this aircraft, given its overall structure, or uh, design, I should say. But, I mean, the speed reduction with those flaps being dropped was impressive. Oh, and you can see what happens with the steering wheel. It changes to a yoke. That's interesting design. I'm sort of wondering how they did that. So I wouldn't want to fly like with the steering wheel. That I feel like that would have been weird. So I'm guessing so you touch down, then you just sort of grab the steering wheel and start driving. But we're gonna try to do everything while we're on the road here. Don't mind us. Ooh, that was full flaps coming in. Probably should have picked somewhere that didn't have any traffic, but that's not very James Bond of us. Stop. 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 Oof! <laughs> Good thing the cars don't have a damage model. Okay, so let's see here. Ah! Oh my gosh! Our roads are not this bad. They are not. 
I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. Ah. Uh. Oh, it's because I'm not in drive mode. Uh. Oh, this is terrifying. What is happening? That did not go the way I pictured it. Do I have to be stopped in order for that to work? No James Bond status? I think that's exactly what it was. Yeah. And then we're in drive mode. On this incredibly bumpy, very dangerous freeway. Right? Because freeways like this would, would be normal when cars are doing 60, 70 miles an hour. Now here's the next question is, how am I gonna get back off the ground with this road condition? I'm not sure how this is gonna work now. Um, hmm. I guess I should have picked like a, a grass runway or a flat spot on the ground, but all right, since we're sitting here blocking traffic anyway. Back to flight mode. Let everything extend out. Looks like we're good. This is going to be interesting. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to go to max power here. I'm going to use flaps one. I'm going to try to get us off the ground like 40 miles an hour, hopefully before the airplane breaks to all heck. trying to like steer through the flattest spots <gasps> oh hey it worked no it didn't Stop. Stop. come on oh my gosh Stop. Iska come on come on come on <laughs> okay so uh, know your uh Know what your terrain looks like. Look at that. I should have seen it. Look at that. It looks like terrible. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that was scary. That was that was terrifying. And I promise that the Tucson roads are not that bad. Although some of them feel like it. I will tell you that much. So let's go back to the airport and land this thing accordingly now that I've uh, effectively terrified myself by not choosing more wisely where you land an aircraft. <laughs> Note to self, scout the area first, then fly it. Oops. Guess I uh, made the mistake there, thinking that all roads are created equal. Oh my gosh. All right. Ooh. Okay, now drive mode, did it reset all my lights again? It, well say the landing lights, but the position lights and the strobe lights it did. Alrighty then. Well, that was, uh, that was very unique, wasn't it? This is a really cool little plane, and I think if you, uh, choose more wisely than I did, you could have a lot of fun with it. Um, we should probably switch tanks. I haven't done that. There we go. Let's land on the right tank there. Yeah, yeah, I like this thing. This thing's pretty awesome. And obviously with the G3000 capability, I mean, you can still enter your flight plans and all that good jazz just like you normally would, right? So you still have all that functionality. So you can put in your flight points. This would be a cool one to do like a city hop in. And I think it would be more appealing, uh, even more appealing, I should say, uh, if you had, if the roads were a bit more refined. But there's still plenty of grass spots, farms, things like that that you can put it down and then go tool around see what uh, cool spots you can find and there are plenty of city updates that uh, I know are starting to address a lot of the terrain issues so wow it is bumpy holy crap I'm just getting kicked around here this is very unique I think I, I really like the thought that was put into this I like that it's something completely different um, and it was real you know it's not like someone just made something up and threw it together this thing actually flew it exists um, unfortunately, like I said, after 2014 and its uh, initial development, uh, development sort of stopped. And again, I would imagine there was a number of reasons of why that, that happened there. But, you know, 
It is what it is, I guess. I do want to try going to car mode on the runway now that I'm not bouncing around. We're going to see if that's if that's effective. Uh, something I didn't look for either, and I have to double check the documentation. I don't remember seeing any, but I don't know if there's any keybinds for it. I hope that that's something that does get into development. But uh, this thing's pretty cool. Pretty neat. Drop that first stage of flaps before we get diving too fast here. This would be kind of something cool to, to see at an air show. And I want to say I actually might have once, but at this point it would be... I don't think I'd be able to confirm that. Let's see here. Come on. Yep. Very bumpy day. Space shuttle approach. Come on, come right. Come right. Full flaps thing will fly at thirty knots. Pretty crazy. Oh, easy. I am doing too much, too much. Oh, bad landing. Slam down, the axles are broken, the tail's been broken off. Candy's falling all over the street. Okay, so I don't think I can do that. I'm trying to see what you can actually do. Doesn't look like I can do that while moving. I was kind of hoping. Yeah, nah, it looks like you gotta stop. So if we stop it... Yeah, that makes sense because there's the park position is in between the two. Yeah, rings are ready to fold. No 007 maneuvers for us. Very interesting. It's so little. <laughs> got this big old runway and you got this tiny little car. Well, my friends, that is the Aeromobile flying car, you guys. This is Aeromobile 3.0. If you guys are interested, you can find it on the FlightSim.2 website. Link will be down in the description below. Again, $19.99 US dollars, guys. Very, very reasonable for this aircraft. Certainly a ton of fun. And it's already received an update since, it's, uh, since I first got a copy of it. So obviously the developers are working on it rather diligently. Um, let me know what you guys think down below, and especially if you guys try this one out. I think the next time I try it, I'll be giving it a roll in VR, and we'll see what happens. As always, you guys stay safe and healthy, and I will see you in the next one.